Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting colorful corn pop <laughs> and I'm sipping on some peach tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, green oxide, chrome orange, Mars black, chrome yellow, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And you can certainly switch up this, those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number three round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are green, black, and white. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating myself kind of a little bit of an abstract type of a background that's gonna be darker on the exterior and a little bit lighter on the inside. I'm going for a nice kind of nature-esque type of color because the objects that we're putting in the painting are very kind of I don't know, organic in nature? Well, except for the candy corn, but <laughs> all the other stuff is pretty organic. So I wanted to have a nice kind of nature type of a color. So I'm going for a, a green, um, a shade of green, couple of different variations to complement the rest of the painting. So I'm creating a custom green, which I have already done. This is my custom green here. How I got to this is I took a bunch of my green oxide, and I put just a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of white in it. And what I'm in essence doing is desaturating the green. So I'm making it with a little bit more of a grayish tone to it. So it had, so it's not so vibrant that it's gonna steal the show away from our main focal point. So that's about the color I'm going for in through there. And what I'm gonna do with this color is I'm going to be putting it around the edges of my canvas. Again, I kind of want this to be abstract, so or like a nice soft abstract background. So I'm gonna be using a variety of directional brush strokes in order to apply my paint in a heavy way. So I am picking up quite a bit of paint as I am applying it. And I'm just kind of giving it these crisscross type of um, effect as I'm applying it onto the canvas. You could apply it with like a palette knife or maybe a bigger brush stroke, whatever works for you is totally fine. Again, I'm still just picking up my, my dark or my custom green type of a color. So now that I've got it on a good portion of the canvas, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start picking up white on my dirty brush and I'm gonna intermingle the white in there as well. So as I'm doing this, Again, I'm not over blending it right now. I'm just kind of putting it in these big splotchy areas. And then once I've got it on here, 
What I'm going to do, I feel like I'm pretty well on there right now. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And then I'm going to be using a variety of just um, different directional brush strokes with not a lot of pressure on my brush to get this to spread out. So I can just kind of do diagonals. I can do circles if I wanted to. I really am just kind of looking to give myself a full coverage without over blending it so I can have this abstract type of feel in the background. If you want yours to be a solid color, feel free to do yours a solid color. I just thought that this would be exciting to add as an additional kind of movement effect of my painting. But again, you could certainly have a solid background if you wanted to. And all I'm really looking to do at this point is make sure everywhere is covered with paint. So I just continue to kind of look it over, make sure that I've got everything covered. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can wash it and dry it. I'm just looking at my little spots, making sure I'm not missing any. There we go. Wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the base coat of our ears of corn. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are brown and white. And I do recommend before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making three long oval type of shapes that are kind of pointy at the end to represent an ear of corn. And I'm gonna have the center one's gonna be kind of in front of the two side ones. They're all gonna be kind of at an angle like this. And then I'm gonna do a, a base coat of the, um, the husk up at the top. Remember when we're doing this step that this is just the base coat. It's not gonna look awesome after this. This is just providing us with a nice brownish color to the, our ears of corn. So when we put the little kernels on, we'll be able to have some nice um, shadow in between. And on the husk, this brown will end up look, being a great base for the yellowish type of appearance that we're gonna give the, the husks later. So I'm gonna guide you through a series of little markers. We'll connect those markers to get similar shapes on our um, ears of corn and we're gonna color them in. So I'm gonna start with brown paint on my large brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself about the center of my canvas, top to bottom, left to right. For me, that's about right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down about two and a half to three inches and then over to the left, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch. So somewhere in through here is going to be my first tip of my corn. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the left of that until I would say I'm about maybe three inches away from the edge of my canvas. And then I'm going to come down about an inch, inch and a half, make myself another little marker. And then I'm going to come from well, actually, you could kind of go back up to the center of your canvas and go almost halfway between here and the end of your canvas. So I'm right about here. So it's a little bit shy of a quarter of the way to there. This is going to be my center one. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to come straight up from here until I would say I'm about maybe two inches from the top of my, maybe two and a half inches from the top of my canvas and go over to the left maybe about an inch, and then I'm gonna make myself a diagonal line that's about two inches wide. I'm gonna do this one, this is gonna be my center one. I'm gonna do this one first, so we can have the other two um, alongside it. I think that's a little, little extra wide, there we go. So I'm gonna take this, again, I just have brown paint on my brush right now, and I'm going to bring it down to my marker in through here, but I want it to have a little bit of a curve to it. I don't need it to be, you know, bumping out really far. Just think of an ear of corn when you're doing this. And then same thing over on this side. And if you can curl, you know, curl that edge or make that edge so it's not super pointy, that would be great. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. So once I've got that exterior in there, now I'm gonna pick up brown and white about equal parts of both on my brush. And I'm just gonna give myself 
a, a vertical or upward, up and down type of brush stroke to color in that entire ear of corn. So it, it's gonna end up looking a little bit lighter in the center, which is gonna give us a little bit of dimension on that ear of corn. And again, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up more brown paint. I'm gonna tackle this one over here. So I'm gonna give myself a little horizontal line right about in through here at a different angle than that one and not as wide as that one. And then I'm gonna connect this left side down to my point down at the bottom. And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna have this connect right about in through here. So something like that. I've got my, my exterior kind of outline and then I'm gonna pick up brown and white. So I'm repeating what I did in here and then I'm gonna Paint it in the direction of the corn stalk itself, or the, um, the ear of corn itself. So this one I kind of did diagonal this way, this one I'm gonna do in um, this direction, like this. And again, just having it a little bit darker on the edges, the exterior edges will work out because that will make, you'll be able to see the difference between the two. And don't worry about perfect coverage. Again, we're gonna be doing lots of stuff on top of this. Wiping my brush off again, picking up just brown paint. I've got my point here, but at the top, I'm gonna come down from this one just a little bit, give myself um, another little kind of diagonal slash horizontal line. And then I'm gonna connect here to here. And yours doesn't have to be as slender or as wide as mine. You can certainly have different shaped corn if you want to. I'm gonna connect this to right about in through here. Yours could be longer or wider. Whatever kind of corn you wanna make is totally up to you. I'm gonna just kind of paint this in a little bit more over on this side. And then I'm gonna pick up brown and white, about equal parts of both on my brush, and paint this interior portion. So. If I had my brown and my white on my brush for the inside of this ear of corn, that'll make it lighter than the edge of that left-hand corn. If you can't see the difference between that center corn and these two, maybe just come in and do the edge of that front corn just a little bit darker so you can see the difference between the two. Not totally necessary, but it'll make your painting process easier when you go to do um, the individual kernels on those on those coins. Now I'm just gonna give myself a real um, simple uh, base or start for my, my husk. So I just loaded my brush with brown paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda go along the edges, up in through here, just to kinda close that off. Now I'm gonna pick up brown plus white on my brush. And I'm gonna give myself these real kind of carefree type of shapes or like long kind of wispy type of shapes just coming out of that top section. Again, I don't need it to be perfect right now. I am really just looking to give myself um, the, the beginning stages. I can even keep a couple of little peekaboo spots of that green showing through, and that'll help to um, make it look a little bit more realistic when we go through the, the um, final kind of process of putting details on. And I'm just bringing these little kind of pointy pieces out to resemble what I perceive to be the husk portion on the, on the corn. And then just kind of maybe I'll bring down one that is kind of behind this guy in through here. And they can be all different shades. Maybe you've got one that's darker. Maybe you've got one that's lighter. Where, wherever that value is at this point is okay because we've got another another layer that's coming in a little bit. And that's all I'm gonna do for my base coat of these. Um, I am going to be using my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna finish the corn husk. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are uh, brown, orange, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of define my shadows, which would be where it meets my, um, my ears of corn and maybe a couple of little shadows in between some of these uh, pieces of the husk. And then I'm gonna be adding a more golden, type of color 
to them in order to make them look more like they're dried out and they've been um, hanging for a while. When I was looking at these kind of um, ears of corn, I think they're called like tricolor Indian corn and they dry them at the end of the season for decorative purposes and things of that nature. So when the, during this drying process, they're all kind of pulled up the husks so you can see all of that kind of nice dried kind of golden color from their, from their um, I don't know if they're technically called leaves, but <laughs> these pieces in through here. So we're gonna add that as an accent color and some little highlights. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown paint on my brush to just make sure that I've got all the nice little dark areas that I want. And keep in mind, we're gonna be finishing the ears of corn, which will overlap this area a little bit. So right now I'm just kind of concentrating on putting some nice shadows in some of these areas. So maybe this one has some uh, shadows along the backside. You could also use a bit of black paint too if the brown is not dark enough for you. I know my, dark, my brown will get a little bit darker as it dries. So I'm cool with um, the deep darkness that it's going to provide by the time it's dry. So that's the color I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna just put a couple of little um, little shadows in through there. Maybe maybe this guy over here's got a little bit of shadow on the bottom side as well. So that's good for my shadows. Now what I'm going to do, maybe a little bit more up in through there. <laughs> I like having dimension in my stuff. So that, that looks pretty good up in through there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my custom golden color. So I have already made it. I'm going to show you how I got there. I have um, used brown, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange and a little bit of white. I'm saying a little bit because I always recommend starting with a small quantity of paint, especially if you're making a custom color, because you may want to continue to adjust it. And in order to adjust it, you have to add more paint. So you may end up with more paint than you bargained for if you start with a high quantity of paint um, in, that, in the initial Go around so that was almost equal parts of all three colors so this is about where I'm headed for my golden color and once it's kind of like a nice light tan with a little yellowish hue to it so once I've got that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start adding these little bits of highlights I don't need to add a lot of paint but I'm gonna maybe add a little bit in through here I will also be adding a touch of white in a minute as well but right now I'm just kind of making it appear so we've got separate pieces of the husk you can even put it on top of areas that you had that base color on it'll be a little bit transparent so you'll be able to see some of those um, tones from underneath which is how it's going to look nice and natural and maybe pull this out and through here and I'm not doing much just kind of streaking this color in in strategic places so it looks like we've got a nice um, golden tone to it even out in through here maybe I pull this out like this put maybe a little bit on this one you could even put um, extra little pieces maybe where you didn't have them before so if I wanted an extra little piece coming off of here I certainly could add those type of little finessing details now I'm going to add a bit of white onto my brush I'm not going to wash it just making sure I'm not overloaded with the tan and I'm picking up a touch of white on my brush as well and I'm just going to add some little additional bits of highlights maybe up towards the top in through here to it, uh, to give the viewer the information that the light source maybe is coming from up above, maybe a little bit in through here. So I'm not, again, doing much. I just really want to have some good color variation in through here with the highlight um, of that golden color, plus maybe a little twinkle of extra brightness to show that there's a light source coming somewhere, maybe a little bit more in through here. Plus this will also help to balance the, we're gonna have a lot of white down at the bottom of the canvas. So adding these brighter notes and tones up at the top will help to balance the, that color out on the, um, on the full composition of the painting. And then once you've got this done, I always recommend letting it dry, seeing if you want to um, adjust anything any. And then we're gonna be using this same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the kernels of the left ear of corn. <laughs>
<laughs> so I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are orange, yellow, white, and black. And what I'm going to do, this one's going to be predominantly orange in nature, but these are tricolor corn on the cobs or ears of corn. So they can have, it is as its name says, at least three colors of the of kernels, but they can certainly have more than that too. I think that they just are nickname tricolor. So I'm going to have mostly orange and then I'm going to add some other colors on top of it. I do want to apply my paint very thickly so I can have um, some good uh, texture to it. I want mine to look nice and textured and I'm doing it in a nice impressionistic style type of a way. So what I'm going to do is I first just load my brush with orange paint. I know that I want to have rows of corn but I don't need them to be super duper straight because the corn is kind of curved. So I'm going to start my first one kind of on the straighter side. I also am going to leave a piece of unkerneled area down at the bottom to imply that they've already popped out. So I'm going to I'll, I'm going to start with my center row, but I'm only going to bring it down about I would say about this far. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a series of kind of horizontal marks like this. You can make yours wider. Uh, it would be recommended to make them a little bit wider than they are tall. So if you're using a different kind of brush than I'm using, just I would just kind of suggest that you make that mark a little bit wider than it is tall to give the more kind of traditional representation of a piece of corn. <laughs> I'm going to do a lot of them orange right now, and then I'll come back and add some um, a couple of different colored ones. Or, as you're going through this process, you could skip, you know, one and designate that as going to be a, a dark one later on. And again, you can kind of put your brush in a different direction. As I'm getting close to here, it's okay if I kind of bump into that one, but I want it to kind of look like it is um, behind it. I'm putting my kernels really close because all I want is that little tiny impression of the darkness or that um, background color behind them. You could certainly um, put yours in any order that you want, but I'm putting them close so I don't have to worry about um, doing anything in between them in a little while. I think I'm going to put this whole area with a little bit different colored corn. I'm going to put this in through here and then I just have these little ones. As you get towards the edge, you can bump these out a little bit. So just bumping that out a little bit. And then on this side, I think I'm going to bring this row down just a little bit further than that one. And then maybe this one I'm going to put even further down. So this whole area looks like it's kind of on, um, like all the kernels have gone away. <laughs> I'm going to skip around on this one, I think, because I want to, I'm going to put some additional colors in through here. So just kind of going along as if this is a ear of corn in rows, <laughs> so something like this. And again, you could certainly have yours any color that you want. If you wanted yours to all be orange in nature, I am going to bring some up towards this top. So that's going to look nice and natural as well. We'll put little highlights in there in a minute. Um, and again, I'm really just kind of speeding along so I don't um, get too hung up on making them perfect because you could really be here for a long time if you if you need these to be super perfect and again which isn't a bad thing it, that's going to be wherever your painterly eye allows you to be but for me I'm really okay with them just being nice and fun I'm popping a couple out over here and I know that my orange is a bit transparent so I will have to do a second layer as I come in through here but right now just kind of getting these orange ones on now I'm going to start introducing some other colors so I don't have to wash my brush I'm going to just pick up a little bit of black paint because I know the black will overpower my um, orange and I'm going to put a couple of dark ones in through here the dark ones can be on the bluer side if you want them to be. Um, you can put a little bit of either blue or you can even make them a little gray if you want to. That's going to be totally up to you. I kind of want a couple up in through here. So I'm just going over some of my orange ones. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put some yellowish ones on. So my yellow, I could totally go yellow and white, which is going to be the dominant color of that one. But I think I'm going to use yellow, orange, and white on my brush at the same time. So I have 
a combination of yellow, orange, and white on my brush at the same time. And this is just gonna give me kind of an additional bright color to the, to the kernels. But again, you could have fun with how you want this to appear. If you want it to appear as if a lot of these are more orange, then go for it, make them more orange. I just like the idea of having the variety of colors in them. So you can certainly do the same if you want to. And then once you've got them pretty much where you want them to be, I just keep kind of going a second coat on some of these uh, because I'm digging this variety. What I'm going to do, I just need to go and kind of clean up some of the um, ones that are a little bit more transparent and then I might pop on a little tiny highlight to some of them. So I'm just washing and drying my brush. I'm going to put um, orange back on my brush just to kind of thicken up some of these edges and that's a, a great thing about acrylic paint is if you're if you're going about it and it's transparent or it's not doing exactly what you want you can always add that second layer on top of it to make it as thick as you want although they acrylic paint can be transparent if you continue to layer it it will no longer be transparent so if you're going about it like I had a couple of areas on the side that I wanted to um, make a little bit thicker or even in through here I want to make that orange a little bit more vibrant I can just kind of throw on a second coat and now that I've got all my pieces of kernels where I want I'm just gonna with my dirty brush pick up a little bit of white and add just little twinkles onto some of them as if they're shiny and glossy and they've got just a little bit of a um, bright little twinkle highlight on them. And that's all I'm gonna do for that one. I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna do the kernels to on the corn, on the, on the right ear of corn. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna use the same colors that I used for the last step. And this time I'm just gonna make it probably look a little bit different color pattern. Maybe I'll have more of the dark ones and more of the yellow ones and less of the orange ones. But again, it's totally up to you. You can make it into whatever you want. I'm gonna start again with some orange ones and maybe that'll help me set the stage. I'm gonna start with my middle. Actually, I'm gonna start by just kind of marking off where I want the area that doesn't have corn on it. So I'm just gonna kind of give myself couple of little, maybe right in through there. I'm just kind of giving myself a little outline. I will change that as I go, but that, that'll help me stay straight as I, as I go through this process. And then I'm gonna just kind of keep my marks at about the same size as I had over there, making my, my center line. I'm just gonna kind of skip along here so I don't, um, I don't want them all to be orange. I'm gonna have different colors on this one or more of other colors on this one. So I'm just gonna kind of skip along, giving myself little spacers in between some of them. I'm gonna put um, some in this next row in through here. Again, trying to keep them pretty darn close. So I um, have that just little kind of shadow area between them. Something like this will work and then I'm gonna put a few maybe down. It's hard to not to get lost in your rows right now when you're skipping along. You could, I suppose, um, mark it if you wanted to. I might switch colors in a second here so I, so I don't get um, lost in my rows, but I know that I want some orange ones over on this side too. Those are pretty bumpy. I'm gonna make those a little bit smoother. There we go, and then I'm thinking that's pretty good. I'm gonna pick up some yellow and white on my brush. So I have orange, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time so I can have some lighter ones. Maybe, maybe this will complete this little row in through here. And because I didn't wash my brush, again, this is allowing me to get this really cool, colorful look to it. Um, you can ha find a, a different process for yours if you want yours to be, you know, more with the with the darker tones, feel free to do that. If you want it more with the lighter tones, it's gonna be wherever your 
visual preference is at, but you can see I'm kind of doing a variety on this one, making sure it pleases my painterly eye, <laughs> which is the only thing that matters when I'm making corn on the cuffs. Is if I, <laughs> I love corn, by the way. Just um, as I was painting this, I'm thinking my favorite snack in the whole world is popcorn. <laughs> so this is going to be a, a great, a great painting for me to, to do. So when I'm doing this part of it, I'm like, I just want to get to the popcorn part because that's my favorite part. <laughs> but you might find a different approach than I have. And then I'm just going to kind of fill these in here. I'm getting uh, some nice orange tones too, like not the dark orange, but a mid-tone of orange because I'm using the yellow and the white on my brush at the same time as well. I'm going to put a bunch of the, um, I'm picking up some black paint now on my dirty brush. Again, strategically on my dirty brush so I can have multi kind of tones within that one piece of um, corn. And I'm starting to just kind of fill in a lot of these gaps because um, I was getting a little lost in my rows, but I'm finding my way back home here. <laughs> finding my way back my corn whole corn row way and then just a couple in through here and they don't you know again it doesn't necessarily have to be black i'm uh, actually going to pick up a tiny bit more white on my dirty brush right now so i can have maybe a couple of gray ones in through here and it looks like i'm going to have a little a little odd space of kernels in through there that's looking pretty good and i'm going to wash and dry my brush right now so i can um, kind of do a second coat on some of them and then also put a little tiny highlight. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to pick up orange and just make sure that I've got some uh, where I want it to not be see-through, just making sure that I've got good coverage on those pieces, making sure I've got some good coverage over in through here. And again, I might, you know, have to let it dry and if there's areas that I want to enhance a little bit after it's dried, I certainly will do that. Picking up yellow and white on my dirty brush to make sure that I've got some of these um, yellowish ones that I want to uh, make sure have their brightness to them. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of white to give myself some sparkle on these. So just wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up a, a tiny bit of white paint and just doing a couple little dots on them to just give them little sparkle dots to make it look like they've got some shine to them. And again, if you need to wait for yours to dry in order to put the little tiny highlights on them, that's that's acceptable. That is a easier approach sometimes. Um, I'm just kind of looking to give the a quick impressionistic appearance to these, but if you wanted to give yours a more realistic appearance, you could certainly wait and give them the dew shine that you want. And then I'm going to use this same uh, medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this ear of corn done, <laughs> you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so you could probably guess what the next step is going to be. <laughs> We're going to be painting the kernels on the center ear of corn. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The dominant colors I'm going to use on this one are yellow and white, but again, I'll sprinkle in a couple of the orange ones and maybe a dark one or two. So I am going, I know that my yellow is super see-through, so if I use just yellow throughout this process, you're going to see a lot of that background. So I will at probably almost all times have white and yellow on my brush so it's going to provide it with a more vibrant look to it. Again, I want to kind of um, segregate out a little bit of this portion down at the bottom so it'll look like we've got um, an area that is doesn't have kernels on it. So something like this, just giving me my, my area down at the bottom. So again, yellow and white is where I've got giving myself my, my rows of kernels, something like that, maybe a couple down in through here. And it doesn't have to be even. You can you can get have it like jagged down at the bottom like this. And then this one I'll probably be able to fly through a little bit easier because I am, oh, except for I've got wet paint all around, um, but I'm using mostly the same color. So I'll be able to just kind of fly through this one a little bit easier, provided I um, am mindful of, my obstacles that are 
on the ears of corn next to <laughs> next to me. I am dangerous around wet paint. It seems to get everywhere on me. So we're gonna give this. A, we're gonna try to be careful, but I'm certain that one of my hands is going in one of these <laughs> left or the, these ones left to right. And again, I'm if if you feel that you're not getting the rows to kind of. Um, look independent from one another, space them a little bit further apart, make the um, kernels kind of opposite or um, kind of in between the one that's next to it. So you've got these two and then this one sits in between these two. So if that's a, a, a challenge for you to get them to look like independent rows, or maybe one time you pick up just yellow, so the color changes just a little bit. So just, you know, as you're going through this, if you're having any kind of challenges like that, just, I should, probably should be working on this side first because that side's wetter. Um, just know that you can certainly change up that color. You can even pick up your orange one time to give you a little bit of um, orange within some of those. So if you're, you know, struggling with making them look a lot different from the kernels next to them. They don't necessarily have to look different, but um, if, you, if you're having difficulty getting those rows to kind of appear, then um, you can switch up that color a little bit and or, like I said, kind of put them in between the, um, the two that are sitting next to it. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> it makes sense in my head, but if it doesn't make sense in your head, um, well, hopefully it will. And then as I get over here, I'm going to use these kernels to kind of clean up this edge in through here. So I definitely want them to overlap that orange one uh, a little bit. So even if I have to add an uh, extra row or um, just extra dots, like I don't feel like I can pull this whole row over that far. So in a second, I will add um, just little dots going down that, that edge to make sure that that is closed off so we see the kernels as opposed to the edge of the corn. So right now I've just picked up more yellow and white and you can even just kind of polka dot down this side to close off that gap between this ear and that ear. So that way it looks a little bit more natural like this one is sitting in front of it. And then I'll just kind of keep fiddling with this and same thing over on this edge. So that's my yellow and white and I, and I have a good amount of paint on my brush and I am not pushing hard on the canvas, so that way it's remaining nice and thick. And again, I can come back and add a little bit more if I need to in order to um, get it to um, be brighter. So right now, I'm going to put a couple of orange ones while this is kind of settling for a minute. So I, without washing my brush, I picked up a little bit of orange. And I'm just going to sporadically put a couple throughout here and I'm just putting them right on top of that yellow um, just again so they can intermingle and that's a, another way you could do it this one we kind of just used each color individually this one I'm kind of just layering it um, but again whatever process works for you I'm going to wash or wipe my brush off I'm picking up uh, black so I can have a just maybe one or two of the dark dark ones maybe one here and here maybe put one up in through here, not much, but just to give that authentic tricolor appearance. And now I'm gonna go in with a little bit more white. So I'm picking up white. I want some of these to be really bright. So I can add more white on these yellow ones because I know that um, they in nature would be just way brighter than the other colors around them. So this white is helping to just add some extra pop and in a second, I'll probably pick up a little bit more yellow as well. And this is how I'm just going to approach it. If, you know, when, when it dries, if I feel that I need to add more of the yellow or the white, I certainly will. If I want more orange ones, I'll add more orange ones. If I want twinkles, I can pick up more white, add a couple of twinkles into these. And again, my whole motive was just to kind of, if I could keep these, the appearance of rows on the, um, on the corn, that, that's the thing that made it look most natural to me. Adding maybe a little bit more highlight up on the top to show that it's the closest to the light source. And that's looking pretty good. And again, I'll probably wait for it to dry, see if there's any additional um, things that I want to do. And then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, 
you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the cobs. So that's gonna be this little piece down in through here. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use that golden tan that we created for the husk white, and I might need a little bit of brown too. I'm going to be creating these little oval type of shapes that are when the corn gets pulled out of the cob, it's the little thing that they sit in. So it's, they almost look like little skin kind of pieces. So I'm just gonna make these little oval type of shapes and I'm gonna make them in the rows. They can be on the messier side. Um, the trick here for me is I don't want them to go all the way white because I'm gonna be having white um, white objects on top of them and I don't wanna lose the appearance of those white objects later. So I wanna, not go as white as light as white so that's where i'm going to be using my golden tan plus white on my brush at the same time and you don't need a lot just a little bit of both and what i'm going to be doing is i'm creating these oval type of shapes in a row so it's going to be allowing me to hold on just making a little bit more on my brush here it's allowing me to I picked up a little bit more white so you could see them, <laughs> to create the illusion that the kernel is gone <laughs> and this is what's left behind. And if, if you can't see the difference between your mark that you're making and the background, that means you do need to make it a little bit lighter. You have to have a, enough of a contrast where you can see the difference between the two, but it doesn't have to be really bright. Just something that's gonna give the illusion. You could even, once you've got these um, done, if you wanted to, you could, because these ones down here don't have to be um, necessarily in perfect rows, you could make them a little bit messier down at the bottom in through here. And you could also, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown right now. If your contrast isn't enough, you can take a little bit of brown and just put a little dot of brown in the middle of that, of that, of that oval. And that'll give them a little bit more dimension and it'll make them look like they're, um, like they've got little pieces popping out here and there. So that's good for that one. I'm gonna go ahead and approach the next one. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up that light golden color plus a little bit of white on my brush. And again, if it, if it needs to go a little bit lighter or whiter, that's great. Go ahead and do that. Just try to avoid going all the way white on it. And again, I'm just doing these little ovals. You could even add a touch of water or liquid medium to your brush to give you um, a little bit more fluidity on your brush, but they don't have to be perfect. We're just giving the representation of what happens to the the cob <laughs> once the kernel gets removed. So something like this, and then again, just kind of hit in this area over in through here. You could, again, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown just to put a little bit of brown inside of some of these lighter areas just to make sure that you can, you know, see that dimensional element. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my last one. So again, my golden color plus a little bit of white on my brush and just giving myself these oval type of a shape, a whole bunch of them. And if you can keep them in little rows to give more of that illusion, awesome. If they end up being really messy down at the bottom, great. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think when you look at a, um, a realistic um, cob, you can really discern all of these individual little pockets where the kernels came from. So that's why I'm just giving it a real loose interpretive way to, um, to represent it. And then once I've got this done, again, picking up a tiny bit of brown paint just to make sure I've got enough darkness in some of those. And then we're gonna be using the, our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our popcorn and our candy corn. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The color I'm using is just white. So I really want these to be, I want my candy corn to be, you know, artificially bright, <laughs> like candy corn tends to be. And my popcorn I want to be really white. So I don't always start with a white base, but in this case I'm going to because I really want those colors to be vibrant on the candy corn, so I need to have the white behind them. And my popcorn itself I want as white as it can be. So we're gonna start with just white and we'll add some, some shadows on our popcorn later. So I am loading my brush with white paint. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my larger ones in place first and then we're gonna put some smaller ones um, going towards the ears of corn. I'm having my um, candy corn emerging from this ear of corn predominantly and a little bit from here and my popcorn is going to emerge from this one and a little bit from here. So my center one's going to have both of them coming out and these two. This will be popcorn, this will be candy corn and I'm going to have them small here and they're going to look like they're kind of flying out towards the viewer so they're going to get larger and larger as they come down here. My candy corn are going to be triangular in shape and then my popcorn are going to have a organic type of round bubbly shape to them. So I'm gonna start with my popcorn ones first. I'm gonna have a really huge one down in through here. So as I'm creating my shapes for um, my popcorn, I, it, for me, again, popcorn's one of my favorite treats. <laughs> so I know that it comes in all different kinds of shapes, but the, the standard kind of exterior edges to it have a roundness to them. So I can take that, that thought process and I can say, okay, well, maybe this is gonna be that top, a little top round part as it's flying at us and the bottom of it is, you know, gonna have this fun, like almost ripply edge to it. But yours doesn't have to be exactly shaped as mine. You could really just kind of come around and do these, you know, whatever kind of organic type of bubbly shapes that you want. Think of them almost like the shapes of little clouds of, of sorts. And then when I go to um, show you how to color them in or to give them dimension, I'll show you how to kind of read whatever shape you, you created in order to give it some dimension. I will come back and put a second layer of white paint on these so I have a nice solid base to them, but right now I'm just kind of um, gonna put a coat on, let it dry, and then I'll come back and do another coat so it's nice and solid. Those are gonna be my big ones. I'm gonna have some smaller ones coming, going back, so, or even intermingled with them. So maybe I'll have a little one in through here with a little edge to it like that. And again, I'm just gonna kind of freestyle these little tiny ones. Maybe I've got a little bit bigger one in through here with a little edge to it. Maybe I've got a good size one up in through here. And I have to, I'm often thinking that like the, the kernel has almost like a bubble top to it sometimes and then almost this little like um, platform area at the bottom of it but I know that that's not true <laughs> in all situations of the popcorn kernels um, as they are being created. I'm putting a couple overlapping in through here as if they're popping right out just going to make some real tiny ones and I'm trying to not make them all the same um, direction, the same shape. I'm really trying hard to give them a organic kind of look because I know that every single piece of popcorn I eat is a different shape. So I'm trying my hardest to make all of these look different. They might come out, um, you know, more similar than I had anticipated, but I'm trying real hard to make them different. And again, smaller up in through here, kind of bigger as they come down here. I want a couple coming out over in through here, so I just reloaded my brush with white paint. I'm gonna have maybe a couple, and overlap the edges too, so that'll give the illusion that they're popping out from in through here, as opposed to just floating in the um, naked air. So maybe we'll put uh, one down over in through here. 
I'm thinking then that's pretty good for the white kernels. I'm going to now do my candy corn. So I'm going to have, again, I, I want it to look like it's coming at the viewer. So here I did a partial piece of popcorn. I'm going to do a partial um, candy corn as well. So this will be a triangular type of shape, but it doesn't have to have super pointy edges to it. If you look at candy corn, <laughs> they have kind of soft rounded um, edges to them as opposed to super pointy, um, jagged kind of edges. I'm going to do a couple over in through here. So just kind of rounding that corner out a little bit. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. If yours turn out really pointy, that's okay too. <laughs> it's nobody, I don't think anybody's going to call you out on how pointy or non-pointy your corners of your candy corn are in your painting. I'm going to have a little one kind of sneaking behind this one. You can have them overlapping. That's a, a you know, a neat little effect to have. Maybe this one kind of comes out this back side. Actually, I think I'm going to make this one in front, make this one a little bit bigger and make this one just in front like that. Yeah, there we go. That's a little easier painting job for me. <laughs> so we've got that one and then I'm going to do some smaller ones as they go farther away or, you know, closer to these guys, uh, or this uh, ear of corn up in through here. So I'm going to have maybe one kind of coming out in through here. And as you get to the smaller ones, if you wanted to use a smaller brush, feel free to do so. You don't have to use the same size as I'm using, especially on these smaller guys. I'm just using this size because I know that this is just my base coat. So if I don't have it perfectly executed. I'm okay with that. I just am looking for something that's going to give me a triangular type of shape. And then let's see, I'm going to have a couple more coming out here. Maybe these start to get a little bit bigger as I'm coming out over in through here. And I need to um, wash or wipe my brush off on my paper towel. So I have a ton of paint in my paper, in my brush so I just need to squeeze some of it out there was too much in my bristles so that helps me to repoint my brush I think I'm gonna have one somewhere in through here and again I'm trying to put them at different angles uh, to just give me an assortment as if they're just flying through the air in a carefree fun popping kind of way but you could you could really organize yours you know maybe you put them on a string maybe you you know, put them coming out exactly at the same angle. You can really do it whatever way works for you. And maybe you have, you know, different, different, you know, type of fun stuff. Maybe you have like streamers or, you know, whatever you want to make it really festive. I'm going to have this one kind of coming out and overlapping my orange kernels a little bit, something like that. And then I'm going to have a couple coming out over here too. So this is the, going to be the ear of corn that has both kind of morphing out of it. And then maybe we've got some coming out here. And again, I'm just doing triangular type of shapes down in through here. I'm gonna have a couple of tiny ones that are gonna just kind of uh, intermingle with my popcorn areas. And then once I've got this done, oh, maybe I'll have a little tiny one over in through here. So they kind of cross over. Oh, I want one here too. So maybe we're going to have a little bit bigger one in through here to carry the color over partially onto this right hand side as well. And then, like I said, once I've got this done, I'm going to let mine dry and do another coat of the white. So I have a nice solid um, base to make my my final details on these little objects. We will be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat done, you can um, put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the candy corn. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using yellow, orange, brown, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stripes on the little pieces of candy and then I'm going to put a little shadow and a little highlight and they're going to be done. Um, I'm going to start with yellow paint. So the stripes on a candy corn, if you're not familiar with this type of candy, they at the pointy tip it's going to be white, then there's an orange stripe, and then there's a yellow stripe. But I want my orange to be very vibrant. So I'm actually going to be putting the yellow underneath it as well. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pick up some yellow paint. So we'll use this one because it's pretty big and you can see the whole thing. I'm going to come about a third of the way um, up from that tip, give myself a slightly curved line, and then I'm just going to color in this whole portion with a thin layer of my yellow paint. It doesn't necessarily need to be slightly curved. That's just going to give you a little bit better dimension on the candy to give it the appearance that it has some form to it as opposed to it just being flat. So again, just a thin layer. We don't. It doesn't need to be super thick because the yellow is going to be really bright. <laughs> and then this one, I, I can only maybe see a tiny bit of the white little part so I'm just going to leave a little sliver in through there and then I'm just going to color the rest of it white or the rest of it yellow up in through here and of course on these bigger uh, candies you could certainly use a larger brush but I know that I'm going to be in just a quick minute going up to the smaller one so I figured I would just use this brush for the whole step. This this big guy in through here, again, I would say my, my tip is somewhere over here, so I'm gonna come, I would say maybe right about in through here so I can have the evidence of that white edge to it. And then I'm just gonna take this, and oh, that was a little thick there. I don't want it to take too long to dry, so just making sure I have my thin coat of paint. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and color in the whole edge. Now my yellow is really transparent which means you can see through it. So if you go outside of your footprint of your candy a little bit into the green, you might likely not hardly see it because let's see, you can see if I paint out there, you can hardly see it on top of that background green. So don't really terribly worry if you go outside the lines. And then I'm gonna find all my other little candy corns. So I've got a whole bunch in through here. And again, just gonna kind of um, put that yellow on and then f uh, give myself a, a line about a third of the way up from the point and then paint the rest of it in yellow. When you get to the tinier ones, uh, again, they don't need to be perfect. That's the beauty of this. We're just creating this nice fun painting and if they yours look like candy corn, great. If they look like some other kind of corn or some other kind of candy, that's great too. It's so funny because Popcorn <laughs> is one of my favorite treats of all time, so much so that I have it almost every day. <laughs> after It's my after dinner snack at night. <laughs> but um, candy corn is probably one of my least favorite treats, but I think they're so colorful and cool. I thought this, this was a great idea for a painting. So <laughs> we just merged like my favorite one and almost my least favorite one. I think it's the texture of them or the, the sugar in them or something. They're just, they, they, you know, not my favorite snack. I've had a lot of them in my day because I have a son and of course every time you go trick-or-treating you get a whole bunch of candy corn <laughs> in your in your basket and I think all parents when there is bucketfuls of Halloween candy sitting around their house you just tend to eat it with your child. <laughs> so I had many candy corns in my day <laughs> and then I'm gonna um, just try and keep my eye on what is a candy corn over in here and what's the popcorn. So I think I'm going to do one more little candy corn up and through here. So now that I've got the yellow on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my brush so I can put the orange on. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And then the orange is just going to be the middle stripe. So I'm going to do that right over my yellow. So I'm going to take about half of this section in through here and I chose to do the yellow underneath my orange. If you have a really bright orange you don't, uh, that's not a necessity but I knew that I wanted my orange to be of a little bit more yellow hue than the chrome orange that I had used up top. So this allowed me to kind of shift the the tone of that color without having to pre-mix a different color. I can, because I know that my orange is a little transparent, so I can use it right on top of that yellow, and it's gonna give me this 
more vibrant yellowy type of orange color which to me resembles the candy corn a little bit better <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and do this section in three here again gotta move my my canvas because this one is all the way down to the bottom and if you go about this and you find that you know after you've got this all said and done that you want even more candy corn or you know more popcorn just repeat the process so just start back with the white base and then repeat the process and you can just recreate it as many times as you would like in as many different ways as you would like and then again these small ones tend to be a little bit easier because they're just smaller and we can usually just get them I can get them with one or two quick swipes of the um, of the brush and if you um, if your yellow isn't dry yet, just give it a minute. I, if it blends in with the orange, it's all right. It's not going to do any harm. But if you're having, if it's blending um, in a way that is not appealing to you, just give it a minute and, and it'll dry and you can, you can work that orange right on top of it. And then once I've got these done with the orange, I'm going to give them a quick swipe of a shadow and a highlight so they look a little bit more three-dimensional and like they're kind of flying out at the viewer so just a couple more in through here get this orange stripe on and then once I've got this done I'm just trying to stay in my lines <laughs> sometimes that's the hardest thing to do as a painter especially when you're working on these little objects like this is and you know that this particular object has a distinct shape to it trying to stay within that line sometimes can be a little a little on the difficult side especially when you have a shaky hand I have a shaky hand so sometimes when I'm doing these smaller objects it can be a bit challenging but I just work through it and and I always say in my head it's just painting but it doesn't come out perfect I'm okay with that so now that I've got the orange on there I am going to wash and dry my brush I'm going to put my high or my shadow on first and then I'll put my highlight on so wash and dry my brush I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of brown paint and all I'm going to do is kind of underline the bottom side of each one this one I can't see the bottom side because it's below my canvas so I'm going to start with this one and really I'm just taking this and giving myself a quick kind of swipe at the bottom in order to give it a little bit of um, a, a little tiny bit of a shadow but to also allow for um, that dimensional element or to be able to see it in front of this background so it serves a couple of different purposes I'm not doing much other than kind of outlining this bottom side of this object and again you could make it as dramatic as you want or as subtle as you want it's going to help in areas like this where the um, candy corn is kind of the edge of it might get a little lost in front of my um, in front of the cob so if I need that little bit of darkness to help the viewer see it a little bit more you could even use a touch of black or dark gray to kind of accomplish the same thing. And the, the highlight is also going to help with those type of areas as well. So I'm just going to kind of um, I have a little extra bit here. So might have to correct that one in a little bit. But um, the, the my orange got away from me on that one, I guess. I'm just, again, taking and just giving myself a little dark outline on this bottom side. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a little highlight on. So this is going to be with just white paint. So wash and dry my brush. I'm going to move this again so we can so we can see it. I'm going to take white paint and I'm going to add a quick swipe down the edge or the side of it um, and then also on the top the top edge of it. So what I mean by that is if you were to turn this triangle with this being pointed down, the top is going to be the yellow section. So I've got my white paint. I'm going to give it a quick swipe down like that and then a swipe in through, oops, not outside of it, somewhere like that. So that'll give the illusion that it's three dimensional and it, it, I'm not doing anything fancy. You could certainly um, make it a little bit more blended and stuff like that. But again, I'm just looking to give a quick illustrative um, type of effect so I'm going to give myself my highlight in through here and then if you're um, again if you're if your paint underneath is still a little wet 
but still a little bit of wetness, you can certainly just wait a minute and you can add this on top of it. Let me just kind of streak this a little bit smoother. There we go. And again, if it goes through wet paint, it's all right. It's just making it look like it's reflecting those colors. So again, just picking up a little bit of white paint, gonna give myself a streak down here, a streak down here, and I'm just gonna keep repeating this. You could also, if you needed to, use a smaller brush. I'm using a pretty small one, but you might find that based on whatever your, um, your hand allows you to do that you might need an even smaller brush, whatever works for you. And then I just kind of keep repeating this. And then once you've got all your little guys done, when you get to the smaller ones, you might not, this might not even uh, allow you to see any of this little detail because it's such a small detail that I'm doing right now. But to me, I try and, I try and treat every piece the same way. So even if it is a tiny piece that you might, the viewer might not even notice that you did this. To me, I feel like I've finished the painting when I do, when I do that, when I, when I give everywhere the same amount of attention, it, um, it makes me feel like I've finished it. And then I'm going to use the same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your candy corn done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our popcorn. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm gonna use are brown, my custom tan that I made for the um, corn husks, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some strategic shadows, because we've already got as much highlight as we need, because we're you can only go as bright as white. So we've already got our highlight. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding shadows to create the form in these little pieces of popcorn and the little divots and stuff that are um, inside. <laughs> I don't know how to explain the anatomy of a piece of popcorn, but um, the little inside of it. <laughs> so we'll take this one for, for example. What I'm gonna do is I would, for when I look at this piece here, how I formed this um, shape, I feel like this, is kind of that bubble outside part and then maybe this little center here is the inside of that so I may put a shadow inside here and maybe a little shadow down on this bottom right hand side to give a little bit of form to this piece and to also make an inside area in through there so I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of brown and my tan on my brush at the same time I'm gonna start on this right hand side in through here where this little divot um, kind of meets. So I've got tan and my brown and I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little area there. I do not need a lot of paint. So once I got it on there, I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna to pick up a little bit of tan and white. Make sure I got both on there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just blend this into my big white area of my popcorn. I just wipe my brush off again. I'm gonna pick up some more white. So I start with it a little bit darker in my shadowy area, and then I blend it in towards my white area. So what I wanna do is keep a lot of white. I don't really need to do much to the white area, except for try not to make it look too dark. I I'm using my darkness as my um, my creator of the form. So I just picked up a little bit more brown, and I if I want this to dip in in through here, I can put a little bit of brown, and then maybe maybe just pull it out a little bit. I'm thinking this is the that inside piece of the popcorn. I'm picking up a little bit of my tan now, so it blends out a little more naturally so it's not just brown and then white and then once i've got that i can pick up more white and make sure that i've got you know maybe this bottom size has a little bit of that whatever the remnants of dirtiness were that i had on my brush and then i just kind of make sure that i fill out the rest with making sure it's got white on it so again i di i didn't do much i just wanted to add a little bit of a dip in there so it looked like there was a hole in it i put a little bit of shadow here so it looks like that's the underside and then i made sure that my my white stayed white so something like this maybe i have a tiny little dip 
underneath here. So that was just a little bit of brown and just kind of give myself a little dark area underneath there. I don't need hardly anything up in through here, but if I want there to be a tiny bit of a, um, of a bit of contour, I can pick up a tiny bit of my tan and white, maybe add a little itty bitty bit over in through here, not much, and then just make sure my white is as white as I want it to be. So, oops, I had a dirty brush there. Um, so just pick up your white if you need to enhance any of that. And that's all I'm going to do for that one. This one, I'm going to pick up my tan and brown because I want this one to be kind of a little bit more like I have an inside piece here, like it's going into the popcorn and then maybe this is the side similar to here. So I have brown and tan and maybe I put a pretty good dark area underneath here and you can be really chaotic with this. You don't need to make it into anything really perfect, just the dark, the darkest dark goes in the center where it would go inside that piece of popcorn and then you fade it out into um, into the edges of the corn. So I'm just gonna put some white paint on my dirty brush to get this to fade out just a little bit so it doesn't just go from dark to light, but we've got a little bit of a transition. And then once I've got that, I wanna see the edge here from there. So I definitely need a tiny bit of something in through here. So you can pick, I'm gonna alternate from here on out with my brown, my tan, and white. So in through there, I just picked up a little bit of my tan just to give it a little bit of difference between those two areas. And then I just pick up my white, make sure that everything blends in the way that I want. If I need an extra bright edge over in through here, I just kind of make sure that that bright, that white shows as much as it should show. And you can keep just adding it until it is, you know, showing the, the bright ripply edges if you want. And that's looking pretty good to me. I think I need just a little heavier in through there. And if you couldn't see the difference between here and here, you can just add a little bit of uh, shadow in through there. So that's looking pretty good to me on that one. I'm gonna go ahead and do this guy in through here. And then when we get to the smaller ones, you'll get the knack. And I just am really gonna be putting little tiny dots inside of them. So I just picked up a little bit more brown. I, I think this one's gonna be a little bit funner. We're gonna have a couple of little dips in this area, maybe one there, and then maybe there's a couple of little dips in this one. So again, just my brown paint to start in through here. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown paint over on this edge in through here. And again, want this to kind of see the edge of this piece to that piece. So I'm putting a little bit of my brown. Now I'm gonna pick up some tan and white. And again, without washing my brush. So this is gonna get this transition into my little light edges of my popcorn. And again, you know, I'm just having fun. I'm not, I'm not worried about it being perfect. I'm just kind of giving myself dark areas that will represent those little inside pockets of the popcorn. And then if I want one area to show away from the other one, just make sure that there's contrast from one area to the other. And then when I feel I've got that accomplished, I'm just picking up my white in order to make sure that it, I have those white little ripply edges that are saying everything that I want them to say in my piece of popcorn. And, the, and wherever I want it to blend is blending as much as I want it to blend. So those are gonna be my big pieces. Now I'm gonna move on to my, um, I think I want this to be broken up a little bit. These look almost too uniform for me. So just making this one a little bit so it's not exactly looking like this. <laughs> there we go, that works. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown paint and I'm just gonna go through these. Uh, I'm gonna hit my shadows first so I don't um, have to keep switching colors. So I just picked up brown. I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath that one. I got these little guys over here that I don't wanna forget about. So maybe we've got just little, and not all popcorn has to have that hole in the middle um, and they can have holes on either side. So you can have these little dark areas wherever you want. Maybe this one's just got a little tiny one down in through here with maybe a tiny little shadow over on this side. And then these little guys, I'm just gonna kind of pop in some little dark marks that hopefully will give the impression of, of some popcorn, of the real deal. 
And again, just going for that fun, impressionistic or representational type of appearance. So as if somebody's giving this a quick glance, they'll say, oh yeah, that's popcorn. You know, even if I don't do every single piece perfectly, just giving the, the representation and the idea. So now I'm gonna pick up some tan and white and just a very little tiny bit of it in order to make sure that I've got um, any areas transitioning into the white area the way that I want. And again, I'm hardly doing anything right now. Just kind of giving myself a tinge of this tan with a little bit of white to maybe give a little bit more dimension. And now I'm gonna put some white paint on my brush so I can just finish it up. So white paint going on my brush, making sure that I've got my, my ripples along the edges, making sure the top is as smooth and vibrant as I want. And then these little guys don't really need anything. <laughs> they're, they're looking just fine the way that they are. And then I'm going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute little kernels of popcorn, all nice and popped <laughs> with dimension on them, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm going bottom left on this one with brown paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever you would like for your identifying mark is completely up to you. And that, is going to, if I can finish my signature here, <laughs> and that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very festive, well, edible, seasonal, fun image, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.